This is the plaintiff, Tiffany Sanders. She says she hired the defendant to build her a fence, paid him, and when she went to his house to see about starting the work, he pulled out a shotgun, pointed it at her face, and ordered her off his property. Needless to say, she never got her fence built by the defendant, and she wants the $1,600 she paid him, and also $5,000 in emotional distress, and is suing him here and now for the $6,600 she's owed. This is the defendant, Richard Eckhart. He says the crazy plaintiff and her husband showed up at his front door and pulled a knife on him and demanded he go to the bank to give them the deposit back on a fence he was hired to build. He grabbed his shotgun. His friend called the cops and he filed a report. His tires were then slashed on his truck. He lost out on other potential jobs dealing with all this nonsense. And if anyone's owed money today, it's not the plaintiff. He's accused of a fence fiasco. All parties, please raise your right hands. The People's Court is now in session, and the Honorable Judge Marilyn Leanne is not presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, Ms. Sanders, what happened here? Well, I was really looking for someone to do my fence, and so happened I ran across a website that said MGT Properties or something, and I reached out to Mr. Eckhart, and I asked him for a quote, and he asked me where where would I like this um, work to be done, where would it be done. I sent him my address, and he asked me was um, it okay for him to come 4 o'clock that day, and I told him, sure. And I was here when he did the measurements, and he left. He said um, he'd get back to me. He ended up emailing me and giving me a price for um, a chain link fence, and I said, no. I talked to you about vinyl. He apologized for that. And he said, let me get that quote for you. He ended up reaching back out to me and saying that it was going to be $3,200 and he needed a deposit half down. I said, well, what payment method would you like to use? He said, so he goes over to your house and he picks up a check for the deposit, which was $1,600. That's how much you paid him, correct? No, he picked up cash money. He was at my house. Cash, I was at the 16, bank. right, right. All right, so $1,600. And what is the day that you pay $1,600? Um, the 10th. The 10th of April. And when is he supposed to start work? On the 20th of April. So is there a contract? Is there a written contract between you guys? So once he came to pick up the half deposit, he didn't have a receipt book or anything. And my husband was saying, get a receipt. He told me he was going to give me a receipt. He went out to his truck and left. I called him. I said, hey, I don't have a receipt. He said, oh, I will email it to you. I said, okay. He's going to email me. I felt better. Yeah, don't listen. You should not be. Cash doesn't leave this hand until a receipt is in this hand. But that didn't become an issue because you text him, I still need you to email the receipt. And he says right away. And then he does. So that was really not an issue. And then what happens? So I gave him the money Friday. On Sunday, I contacted Rick, and I, I told him, I was like, you know what? My husband no longer want me to do the daycare at home. I said, take out a cancellation fee if you want, because I start feeling iffy, because when I went back to the website that I norm I looked him up on, the whole webpage was gone. He said... When do you tell um, him that? What day? That Sunday. Sunday. Which was... That Sunday was Easter 12th. Sunday. On Easter okay. Sunday, right? Okay. I text him. And so you send him a text at 719 in the morning saying, yeah. at this time, my husband decided I can't run the daycare out of the home, so I no longer need to put up a fence. Call me when you get this message. And then at 1208, you text him, if you have to charge me a fee for canceling, let me know that. But don't start ignoring me because you're dealing with a lot of my money right now. It's Sunday, not just any Sunday, Easter Sunday. So what happens next? So I went over to Mr. Um, Eckhart's house. The address. How did you have his home address? It was on a receipt. So I'm thinking it's his business address. So I go and I'm like, let me make sure this is real because. Why would you go I'm to his careful. business address on Easter Sunday? 
I don't know. I was just trying to make sure that it was. Okay, so you show up and then you know it's. I know, but the guy gave you his home address, right? So it turns out he's not trying no. to be shady. So he, so you go to his home on not just a Sunday, but Easter Sunday, and then you show up at his house at what time? Um, it was about 11 p.m. You showed up at the guy's house at 11 p.m. Yes. And knocked on his door. House. All right, let me hear from you, Mr. Okay. Eckhart. Did they knock on your door at 11 p.m. or was it earlier? Well, actually, it was only about 10.30. They knock on your door and what happens? Well, Miss Sanders did show up that evening and knock on the door. And she mentioned that, you know, did you see my text? I said, yeah, I saw your text. We can talk about this. And I said to her, you know, if you want to cancel the job, it's right on the edge of the 72 hours where you would be entitled to a full refund. But I'll give you a full refund. However, I've already ordered some lumber for the project, so I'll need to get that cash back and then I'll send it out to you. You've got 15 days to return a client's money if they cancel the contract. And then she hemmed and hawed and said, well, you know what, let's just go ahead. So, okay, fine, you know, we're good. Have a nice evening. Then the rest kind of snowballed after that. What happened? On the Tuesday, the 14th, uh, I had stopped back to grab some lunch around noon, and the plaintiff was waiting there in her car, and she came out and approached my truck and said, well, you haven't filed any permits with the city. I called the city. And in our area, every municipality requires a local license in addition to your state license in order to file a permit, but a homeowner can file without any licensing. So I always tell my clients, if there's a permit required, you will need to pull it. And I tell them that up front before I... Well, why don't you just put that in a contract, that the homeowner's responsible? Why don't you have contracts? Actually, the email that she received is, it states the price, the terms, and there's a button to click accept, like an electronic signature. After she left that day, then on the 17th, which was Friday... She and I, who I assume to be her husband showed up at my door again <laughs> in the morning as I was getting ready to leave for work. And her husband said, you know, we need the full 1600 back again. I went through the explanation of, well, you know, I'll be happy to send you back your money, you know, even though you canceled after the term and I've got time and money invested in this. But, you know, you'll have to go through the process. And at that point, he said, no, you're not leaving unless you're coming to the bank with me. I said, no, I'm sorry, that's that's just not happening. At that point, he stepped down off the porch, started to walk around the side of my house towards my garage, reached down into his pants leg, pulled out what to me appeared to be a knife, and said, is that your truck back there? I'll make sure you don't leave unless you come with me. So I came into the house, told my partner to call the police, took my shotgun out of the closet, and went in back to intercept them. Wow. Okay, well, we actually have a video that someone, was that your husband? Who took this video? Look at you. Let us, let us rectify this. So you got $1,600 of my wife's money, okay? I understand you got your little stand your ground. You done pointed at me already. You done pointed at, no, I didn't pull a knife. You didn't see me pull no knife, so stop, stop lying. I saw you pull a knife, and that's not too this. Okay, that's what you say. Stop lying. The thing is, you got your, your gun right here. I don't, I guess that's your coworker, whoever. You got $1,600 of my wife's money. You don't want to show a receipt, right? You don't want to, uh, you didn't pull no permits. You told her you're going to pull a permit. So far, you haven't done anything of what you said. Mr. Rick, what, I, well, I got your face. Richard. Stuff up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I need you to record like I'm recording because you already made a threat and you came and threatened me with your weapon. You pointed at me. I should have had the camera point then. You're you put it in my wife. You pulled a knife. You, you, oh, I didn't pull no knife. Pay attention, pimp. You weren't even out here. You was in the house. I'm watching you. <laughs> I, I said I'm watching you when he said I pulled a knife. Don't threaten us anymore. Ain't no threaten. I never threaten you. I just told you you need to have us some receipts, you period. Said you said that my red truck. No, I ain't got no knife. You see my hands? That's one hand. This 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 here is the other hand. Pay attention. These are my pockets, Pip. You see that? You you watching? So pay attention. You the one who did the violating. I will see you though. What is happening, Ms. Sanders? Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff says that she hired the defendant to build her a fence, but he didn't do any of the work. 
The defendant says he did plenty of work before she changed her mind and he's not giving any money back. Let's go back into the courtroom. The real truth of what happened is my husband asked him, he said, um, you said you went to go get material. Can we get a receipt? And he said, no, it's, it's, in, it's buried in a lot of files. And my husband said, well, we have all day to wait because we need these receipts. Well, Mr. Eckhart walked back in the house and when he came out, he came out with a shotgun. He started, and he said, okay. like, get away from my property. Okay, right. Um, maybe you shouldn't be on his property demanding $1,600 and demanding that he go get in the car and go to a bank with a stranger who's, you know, I mean, these aren't no, normal, this happened. isn't normal behavior. What happens between Easter Sunday and the 17th to cause you and your husband to show up at the house? He said, I bought all the material. Uh, okay, what material? Hold on one second, because I do want to ask you about that, Mr. Eckhart. What material? What material had you bought? She hadn't picked it out yet. What did you buy? I hadn't said that I had purchased all of the materials, but we do need lumber and cement. Did you purchase and... lumber? You told her on Sunday that you had purchased lumber. I'm finding that a little hard to believe. Yes. Because you got the deposit on, on Friday. I think maybe you took a little license with that to try to persuade her to keep the contract, which apparently worked, so whatever. But do you have a receipt for any lumber? I don't have that here. I buy lumber. Where would you have it? You're at your house, and this is a lawsuit about that. Where would you have that? I don't think you ordered anything. Can I see your order? That, as I said, I don't have that at your time, this time you're out. Uh, I don't know what time. When you say I don't have that at this time, you don't have that because this is the time. I'm wearing the black dress, and we're ruling about this. So that's unfortunate. Now, here's what happens on Sunday, no, on Saturday. April 18th, you send him a text. This is crazy. Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Rick, would you like to go look around at Home Depot this morning? He doesn't answer you. At 8.10, maybe we could get the post in this weekend. What are you talking about? He's, you're not, he's not working for you on Saturday. That's at 8.10. He doesn't answer. At 8.46, I'm just suggesting, let me know if you're busy this morning because you and me could go this morning. At 8.48, two minutes later, I mean, maybe you have a problem with boundaries. Like, maybe you're a little bit unreasonable. 8.48, Rick, I really need this fence done. Can you please help me get this together? He answers you at 10, 19. I am already working on other projects today, sorry. So on Sunday, you text him, Rick, you need materials for tomorrow. I don't understand why you want to wait until the last minute. That's at 8.55 in the morning on a Sunday. At 9.36, you tell him, maybe if I talk with Debbie, maybe she can make all this make sense to you. I need you to do what you were paid to do. I'm not going away. So I'm really hopeful you understand that. Uh, why is this happening? Why aren't you waiting till Monday? If he doesn't show up and he can't build a fence, then he's breaching and you can get your money back. Why are you hawking the guy on Saturday and Sunday again? Because Who's I Debbie? That yeah, I know what you felt, but Debbie you're nuts. Who's Debbie? Debbie is my sister. That morning between the time that she sent the first texts and when I responded, she tracked down both of my sisters on Facebook and messaged them on Facebook, telling them that you got they needed to get me a uh, kick in the rear end. You've got to no. be kidding me. And my... I did not tell them that. I did not tell them what that. What did you, I you said, track you... down his sisters on Facebook? That's crazy. I tracked them down on his page, that's his, his business page. Why said, are you property. doing that? I think you got a little OCD, which don't we all, but yours has to keep in check. This is crazy. It's just, it's really, it's too much. And you're, you're literally trashing him on a website saying he stole your money to people, which is not okay, because he's not supposed to work for you it's until Monday. Now, here's what you do, and this is really concerning me. Scammer. Rick was paid, just a moment. Rick was paid to put up a fence, and he never did the job. Drugs play a big part on why he can't get the job done. Can I ask you a question? Where do you get that from? Because when I went to uh, Rick's house and I was standing on the porch, his significant other was sitting at the table with a lighter, a spoon. This is the reason because it was drug pale familiar sitting right there. They got a big picture window and a door. You mean on right the night there. when you decide 
Do you mean on the night when you decided that he would he could do the job anyway? That day? because after no. that you decided he could do no. the job anyway. Yes, you did. I'm looking no. at your text. I know you decided he could do the job anyway. So I think you're yeah, a liar. And you know what? The worst part is if you just held yourself in check, waited until that Monday. If he had breached it, you'd be getting all your money back. But instead, what you do is you trash a guy and make up stuff about drugs, and you think there's not going to be a consequence for that? Oh Lord above, folks. You're asking for defense deposit back, plus another 5000 in emotional distress. Well, I believe you're going through emotional distress. I just think it's self-induced. Or maybe your husband is cranking you and cranking you and making you feel crazy about this, and maybe that's what's going on. I don't know, but something is upsetting you. I'd like to talk to you about the tires now. Did you folks, Ms. Sanders, did you folks slash his tires? No, ma'am. No, I did not slash okay. his tires. All right. Now, according to you, tires were slashed. Show me a picture of slashed tires. Did you ever call yes, the police on Saturday to tell them that your tires had been slashed and you knew who did it? I actually called them on both Friday after they showed up and on Saturday. Did they file a report? Did you file a report? I did Do you file have a, a police report. report. Can you show me any evidence that you called it into the police and identified that they were the ones who did it? I can't have it this time, Your Honor. No. It just, there's something that just doesn't sit right about that. And that worries me. I'm concerned that I never saw a tire slash until this moment. I'm concerned that there's no evidence that you called in a tire slash. Can you respond to that? What's your answer to that? Well, certainly, Your Honor. I don't like to get confrontational until I'm pushed to the absolute edge. And I point, have I a video of you with a shotgun. It. Don't tell me you don't like to get confrontational. A guy who doesn't like to get confrontational says, get off my property now. I'm going to return your money tomorrow and gets rid of them. You are exactly the kind of guy who wants to get confrontational. I know that. I feel it in my bones. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to cost you to trash him on those. So you can't just make up that someone has a drug problem. Yeah, there are consequences to doing that. I know it felt good. Okay. Did it feel good? Felt good. Felt good. But you can't just do. You have to have a filter. You can't just show up at people's houses in the middle of the night. You can't just text them 20 times when they're not answering you. And you can't just write stuff on websites that are public with, you can't reach out to their family on their Facebook pages. It's all crazy, and you can't do that stuff. So that's good, because otherwise, I'd be ordering him to return your money, all of it. Okay. But he's not going to return all of your money, because you owe him for the defamation. You do, OK? So I'm going to order him to return a portion of your money. Mr. Eckhart, return 800 of the $1,600. I think that's plenty for the trouble that you've had to go through because you can't prove anything on the tire slashing. I think that's, I'm not even sure tires got slashed, but I am going to order uh, you to return only half of the money and you keep the rest for your troubles at having to have been uh, slandered on those websites. But because you cannot prove that you spent a single penny doing anything, and because I thought it was kind of pushy, when I, when I hear you say, well, I'll be deducting everything I bought and talking her out of canceling in the 72-hour mark, I think that you should be returning some of the money. But because you went so nuts and were, and so were so out of control and really did harass him and posted stuff you shouldn't have posted, you're not going to get all of the money. $800 verdict for the plaintiff. You saw some of the plaintiff's actions in this case as a little nutty, uh, effectively. It's oh, kind of the words that you used. Yeah. And I, it occurred to me that in contract law, there's a thing we call anticipatory breach of contract, where one party starts acting in such a way that it's obvious to the other party that they're never really going to perform their end, and that would excuse performance by the other party. But this was more of a just kind of almost baiting him into into breaching. Do you think it, she wanted to have the fence built at the end of the day? Yeah, I do. I think that she did, but I think that part of why she did is because he lied and said that he had bought materials. That right. man never bought materials. There's right. two things I'm certain about, and right. I wanted to know what you thought about it. Okay. A, he didn't buy any materials. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm not sure, like, of some things. I'm not sure if Elvis is alive or dead, but I'm positive he didn't buy the materials. Right. All right? <laughs> and B, actually, there's three things I'm about. Okay. B, he's not afraid of them. Right. Because if you're afraid of some, you know, crazy people who come to your house at 11 p.m., you, you don't just give doing, them the money. You don't keep you don't, doing business. You don't bait them. You don't, you know, actually, right. they, they come to the house at 11 p.m., and then the shotgun incident is a few days later. Right. 
um, on the Friday. I mean, you don't look afraid to me. Right. You're instead of returning their money and saying, oh, my gosh, I don't need these headaches. You're talking to people about how you can keep them. He is not afraid. And the third thing that I am pretty sure about and I wanted to know what you thought yeah. is there was no tire slashing. You know what? I, I I don't think I think quite the man the changed way. a tire. Here's, I think he's busy figuring out how to keep the money, and I well, think he was gonna change a tire anyway and and fix the car. And he changed a tire. He goes, oh, you know what? Let me slash that tire, and then I'll build up my. Because if we were in court and I didn't have and, and we weren't remotely in court, if he was in front of me, I'd have grabbed that man's phone and checked out the metadata on that. Okay, picture. let me tell you how I saw it. I saw it as I'm pretty sure his tires did get slashed by the plaintiff or by the plaintiff's husband, by somebody on the other side. But at the end of the day, you found that he was entitled to a return of about half of the monies. She was entitled to a return of about half of the monies. I would have found she wasn't entitled to or she was entitled to a return of all of the monies, less about 800 bucks for the slash exactly. right. See, so I found I the 800 said, bucks for the I, drug dealer comment. That's right, what I, or the right. drugs So we would have arrived at the same place, right. just by a different means. Right. All right. So we got this question from Carolina from Miami. Did you ever go out in New York City with Ed Koch for lunch or dinner in between cases? I love that you asked me that question because the answer is yes. And Ed Koch was a rock star in New York City. I remember going to restaurants with him and people would just swarm him to get autographs. But the biggest thing, I went to Radio City Music Hall with Ed Koch to see Cindy Lauper. And we walked down the aisle, and I am telling you, he got applause as big as Cindy. That'll do it for this case. The litigants are in the courtroom for the next.